What's up, everyone? We're back for another episode of Locked On Bucks, and the the Bucks beat the Lakers, which means we had to get uh, added reinforcements to the podcast tonight. We've got Camille. That was planned. Frank wasn't podcasting, but of course, Giannis had 47 points, so all of a sudden, he's available to podcast, so we're going to break down this win. This was a classic Giannis performance. Chris was back. The Bucks kind of looked like the Bucks. It wasn't easy, but at least personnel-wise... Uh, some of the players they had on the floor were a little bit more familiar. So hopefully this is a fun podcast. Let's jump into it. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Bucks. I'm your host, Kane Pittman. You can see me and hear me on this show daily and find my words over at ESPN and NBA Australia. Joining me is the founder of brewhoop.com and longtime voice of the podcast, Frank Madden, and uh, one of the hosts of the Technical Foul podcast, a regular on this podcast also, uh, but I do believe first time on a post-game podcast is Camille Davis. Everyone who's been listening to the podcast for a while uh, knows Camille. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by mcdonald's uh proudly serving community since 1965 mcdonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty affordable food it's an unofficial community center a big thank you to our friends at mcdonald's for always being there uh i'm loving it i was also loving tonight's win and we always thank you guys for making lockdown bucks your first listen of every day and i got this tweet during the game that i'm going to bring up here on the screen uh from josh (laughs) semro he says, this is me in the morning checking my phone to see if there's a new Locked On Bucks. And there's that unbelievable gif that Bobby Portis brought us tonight when he ended up sort of face planting the floor <laughs> and then just staring down the camera. Uh, the one thing I noticed from that, guys, and Camille, you can, you can get us started, was that when he did that, we've seen before that Bud has been angry about Bobby Portis, whether it's flexing or celebrating a little bit. Darvin Ham almost got to the free throw line telling him to get up and get back down the floor. That's Bobby for you. That's part of the Bobby experience. I mean, you you get those moments after he knows he did something well, where he is going to relish in that moment for a while. And that's just part of the Bobby experience here in Milwaukee, especially with the crowd being behind him, like tonight's game, where the way the Bobby chants were going and he was hustling and giving it his all. Had a feeling we were going to get some extra Bobby shenanigans along the way. Yeah, he had that one possession where he had uh, the strip steal under the basket and then back-to-back offensive rebounds, which was just classic Bobby Porter stuff. Uh, but Frank, come on, uh, take it over, okay? You're here, you're telling us you're on a, you're telling us you're on the clock. I don't believe that. We'll see how that pans out here. You've said 20 minutes. I think this Giannis spiel might go for more than 20 minutes. So Giannis tonight, uh, I tweeted at halftime. I mean, he had 28 points in the first half. 20 of those came in the paint. He was looking at anyone in front of him and just saying, I don't give a shit. I'm going to score around you, over you, through you, whatever it takes. To finish with 47 points on 18 for 23 from the field, uh, I'm going to bet you enjoyed uh, watching this Giannis performance tonight. Well, it was it was a little anxious in the second half when you know they could not put the Lakers away, and you felt like, man, this is just sort of this this year's Bucks, you know, so far. Like they just, uh, you know, Giannis having this incredible game, and I was joking about Chris and Drew not being people I'd trust in the layup line right now. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> hit some big threes there uh, as the game wore on. But uh, yeah, I mean, d- didn't that, it felt like a game six like performance where the Lakers made the decision of, hey, we have Anthony Davis. We have, you know, a great individual defender who nominally can match up with Giannis. So let's see if he can just basically contain him. And Giannis just was like, uh, I'm I'm just attacking, attacking, attacking. And I mean, he hits three threes tonight, but um, it was really about just the aggression from the word go. And I think it was just maybe Giannis was so shocked to see a defense that was not, you know, loading up three, four guys <laughs> around the paint to slow him down. They said, I'm, I got to get to the basket. And man, some of the strength he was showing, especially in that first half, just AD, just shrugging AD off, using his shoulders, just bouncing off him. I mean, that is like virtuoso Hall of Fame Game six finals MVP type Giannis basketball that that we know and love. And, uh, you know, I, I obviously the first half was monstrous with the 28 points, what, 12 out of 13 from the field. But mm-hmm. uh, the, the fourth quarter that that little push shot he got to for the and one over, I think it was THT that 
also had me having flashbacks to game six where he was hitting, you know, a shot. He hit a shot like that in the fourth quarter coming down the stretch. And um, yeah, I mean, it was just everything working. We saw him hit a couple of mid range jump, jump shots tonight as well. Used his size as a bully, Chris Middleton, throwing the ball over the top down the stretch a couple of times. So yeah, just a vintage Giannis performance. And I mean, unfortunately they needed it because, uh, you know, not exactly uh, a vintage performance from the rest of the Bucks. Uh, shout out to Pat Connaughton and Bobby, obviously. I think those guys really held up their end of the bargain. And, um, you know, as you guys were alluding to, I mean, even in a Giannis 47 point game, I think Bobby had the possession of the game, right? With the steal, mm -hmm. the offensive rebounds, and eventually throwing that little hook shot in late in the second quarter. Um, he was really good tonight. And I thought the fact that they held up okay with him on the floor defensively when Giannis was out. I talked a lot about that in the last podcast, probably too long about that, <laughs> about the defensive problems that they can have when they do that. But um, I thought the Bucks had a nice, nice organization defensively. We saw both teams work in some matchup zone to, to try to throw the other team off. And I think it worked actually for both teams a little bit, but, um, but yeah, just, just enough um, to get this home, home stand off on a winning note. Yeah, I actually thought of you, Frank, when uh, Bobby had those multiple offensive rebounds because when you were pointing to, and I, I, you mentioned this in the pod, but you certainly tweeted about it as well, that if you do just bring any random big off the street, you're going to lose what you get on the offensive end. And I think we saw that tonight, particularly with those, with those hustle plays. Uh, but you mentioned the THT, and there was back-to-back -back possessions. You had that hook shot, mm -hmm. then that, that lob from Chris over the top. And... I mean, the Lakers were just like, all right, all the best, Horton Tucker. You can have Giannis on you. He's already got 40-plus points. It did remind me of that Jay Williams clip uh, when Giannis uh, signed the, the Supermax, and he's like, well, I don't know if this helps the Bucks because the Lakers have got Taylor and Horton Tucker on the roster, and I was watching him just you know, dominate him. But I think there's a comfort level with that shot when he knows that, first of all, the double team's not coming, and second of all, he's just bigger that guy, uh, bigger than that player. But Camille, I... If you were watching on ESPN, Jalen Rose and Stephen A. Smith absolutely roasted Anthony Davis and just said, this is why he's not this guy. And I know that it's only one game, but we've seen this time and time again from Giannis. And, and sometimes you can have these performances and you don't win games. It's hard to win by yourself. We've seen that. But those two guys are not the same and they should not be compared with each other. I mean, at this point, it's just ridiculous. No, the days of that comp being a, an argument, like a barbershop argument or whatever you want to call it, I feel like those days are far behind us. And I do want to say, before I knew Frank was coming on the podcast tonight, I was like, I got to do my best Frank impression on oh. the podcast without Frank after a post game. And Frank did not even bring up the fact that Giannis went eight for 11 from the free throw line. That's the, that's the shtick. <laughs> We got it. We got that. Should that should be the baseline right now, right? Seventy-two percent. Like, come on, we got to raise our yeah. bar. But it was it was important. <laughs> I mean, he he's been shooting the ball a lot poorly. Um, you know, not nearly as well lately from the free throw line. So that was very welcome, especially down the stretch, actually hitting some free throws. Yeah, it was a definite bounce back game for him from the line. And in regards to the ESPN broadcast, I always watch the local broadcast. I always prefer watching our guys. Um, but at halftime, I said, let me just flip over to ESPN and see what the halftime show was looking like. I did not expect to see Stephen A. Smith like in first take mode where he was just like <laughs> full face, just screaming and hollering, but they absolutely let AD have it. They're like, you cannot have eight points when your matchup has 28. It's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. And I would agree with that. And AD finished the game with 18. So, I mean, he, <laughs> THT was the leading scorer tonight. So I, I feel like that says all you really needed to know about the Lakers performance tonight. Um, AD and Gian Giannis just outclassed him and just all around on the court tonight. He got what he wanted when he wanted. It did not really matter too much what AD did. AD had a few defensive plays there where he did get the better of Giannis, but he clearly lost <laughs> lost in the end run or in the end game here tonight. So I love what I saw from Giannis, especially given the fact that he also shot out shout uh, AD from three tonight, which is a funny misconception to me. I love that everybody just automatically assumes Anthony Davis is just like this amazing three-point shooter, maybe because his shot looks prettier. I, I think that has to be it at this point. But seeing Giannis go three from four from three and AD go 0 for 1 was also kind of sweet. Yeah, that's uh, 
not overlook that extra pass Bobby made to the open Giannis on the wing for the catch <laughs> yeah. and shoot three. I was thinking to myself, I don't know how many times we've seen that. I mean, certainly there's been times where he's been in the corner, but it was a beautiful ball swing. Mm-hmm. And then it's uh, Bobby Portis was within his rights. I mean, straight away, he knocks down that shot. That's a good spot for him. He said, hey, I'm just going to find Giannis here. And Giannis was feeling it. And Giannis gave one of those looks in the first quarter. He sort of had that that sort of that uh he sort of pivoted went around little hook shot and he was he he had that scowl that okay no one's stopping me tonight i can do whatever the hell i, I was gonna say kane he had that spin and i i think he he, he kind of wanted to throw it down on dwight but then he yeah. was just a little bit too far out and he had to just drop it in and i i was gonna i almost dm'd you to ask if that was a ruling whether that was a stink face i think on the replay i think it counts as a stink face i don't know how much your uh uh your your counter is this year i know we had an over under for Giannis stink faces at like 20 or something like that and he's I almost at like the over honestly he's seriously. he's yeah yeah he's the, the the winning a championship has not um has not dulled Giannis's uh enjoyment of of throwing up a, a mean mug um I, I think we call them mean mugs too I, I don't know I I interchangeably stink face a mean mug but uh yeah that was that was pretty fun I, man I, I really wanted him to just, just go full extension and throw down on Dwight but you know that's okay he, he was okay he had an okay night 17 points in the first quarter you just knew it was going to be one of those nights. I mean, I think he had eight in the first like three or four minutes and it just felt yeah. like he was, he was just attacking so quickly. And I think Camille, to your point, 80s first basket, it was kind of like an in-between little leaner shot. That's the one shot that Anthony Davis has, which Giannis doesn't. It's that like, you know, eight to 12 foot kind of touch shot. And AD is very good at those shots. I mean, it's in, and, and I think you're absolutely right. People see those shots and he's, historically been a good free throw shooter um Mm -hmm. and they think they then they assume like oh he's you know he's got a nice looking shot hit some mid-rangers yeah he must be a good shooter it'll stretch out to three but that's just been something that's always surprised me that he's never stretched out to three point range effectively and you know it's been said brought up a lot that even his mid-range jumper has been really bad the last couple years basically outside of the bubble where he had this incredible run um it's been it's been really rough shooting mid-range shots and i thought tonight um, pretty much all he got. I mean, he got very little other than that one uh, dunk in transition where Giannis, you know, in typical Giannis fashion, tried to catch him from behind and and didn't. Probably should have been a foul, probably. Um, mm-hmm. And and that got AD pretty pretty mad. But he was settling for a lot of jump shots. And you know, to his credit, nine out of fifteen, that's fine. But didn't get to the free throw line. And I think you know, obviously, Giannis deserves credit. Um, but I think also, I think the Bucks deserve credit team defensive, you know, from a team defense standpoint, they were showing that extra body. They were kind of zoning up the strong side and making a kind of, kind of like what teams do to Giannis and what we've seen probably too much happen to Giannis where, you know, he's, he's trying to size up his defender and figure out what he can do. And it's just like, man, there's just a lot of guys here until he has to settle for a lot of jump shots. And obviously, you know, you live with that performance from, from AD any night. And I think Giannis, you know, he's he's been hungry for a game where he could get to the rack and get to the rim. And, you know, you look at the numbers, it, it finally felt like a Bucks sort of statistical profile game in the sense that they actually scored 50 paint points. Um, you know, they they actually, you know, ended up winning the defensive boards. They, they gave up more offensive rebounds technically, but from a re- rebound percentage standpoint, they were about 80% defensive rebound rate, which is a very nice thing to see given how some of these games that they've been performing on the, the defensive board. So, um, so yeah, just, just felt like, a you know, again, with this is, this should be knock on wood, the hardest game of this homestand. And you just hope, okay, you get this over with not a work of art, not a dominating performance by any stretch. You know, we talk about, I think we should probably talk about Drew and Chris, different scenarios for some of their struggles tonight with Drew, obviously still kind of not getting back to where he needs to be. Whereas Chris, you know, Hey, coming back from his first game back from COVID, I think he, you took would take anything he could give you tonight and his passing was great but um but yeah i think you just you know when you're six and eight it's like all right let's just chalk up some wins and get get back to 500 then let's get north of 500 and and start to play more like like we know we can play it's funny i mean the lake is now uh, eight and eight the bucks are seven and eight and there's there's a number of teams that were around the mark obviously the bucks got handled by the atlanta hawks a couple of days ago but they've been really struggling as well so there's a number of teams that just have mediocre records at the moment but as you pointed to the Bucks return home now, and uh, they'll get a good run at it. If you had, if you did jump on BetOnline.ag tonight, and you had Giannis for thirty plus points. I reckon you were feeling pretty comfortable about that at halftime. It was probably a good night for you. But uh, before any of the NBA games across the league, you can find uh, all the the bets, the odds, the props, whatever it is. You can find it at BetOnline.ag and the new and updated desktop or mobile website. 
Just use the promo code Locked On for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Uh, if it's not basketball, you can find football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games as well. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the upcoming seasons. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. That's bet online uh, where the game starts. Uh, again, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen of every single day. Uh, you can also check out, check out the Locked On Today podcast with our friend Peter Bukowski. If you listen to Locked On Bucks and you just want some more Bucks talk, I'm about to record with Peter a little segment there so you can check that out. So I'll give myself uh, some more promo. But uh, before we get to Chris, I just want to ask a question of both of you guys. Uh, Camille, you can go first. Do you think that the the physicality of the NBA this year <laughs> is, is helping Giannis? So... I look at it and I tweeted that I enjoy watching it more. I like that there's fewer foul calls. I like that the time of game appears to be to be going quicker. That's that's an enjoyable experience for me. And just in general, if Bobby Portis and Kamalo Anthony want to wrestle each other to the ground, go for it, boys. Like, I'm cool with that. We don't need to be stopping the game for that. They can both get angry about it, whatever. Uh, the only the only point that it, it becomes, you know, I, I get concerned about it is with Giannis, for instance, and is, is someone going to hurt this man or is he going to push too hard and, and injure himself? That's the only that's the only reason I have any cause for concern. But do you think it's helping Giannis on a night like tonight where he was just like, you know what, do whatever you want. I'm going to overpower you because I'm stronger than you and I can go for longer than you can. It's a good question. It's one I haven't really thought too much about. Um, as a kid of the nineties, like I'm, I'm, I'm used to watching basketball that tends to be a little bit more physical. Um, I'm a fan of it. I'm also a fan of the modern game, of course, but being able to see Giannis just kind of be able to play a little bit freer and your point about him maybe going too hard is well taken, but I think where it helps Giannis at, in addition to offensively is his ability to really go all out defensively because he's not going to be getting the foul calls that he might have gotten last year. So I think that it's a time period of really adjusting and figuring out exactly what refs are calling and what they're not calling, what you can get away with, what you can't get away with. And I think it suits Giannis perfectly fine to be able to go out here and play, you know, just a little bit loose, more loose and free. But the only downside to that would be we know Giannis can have kind of that temper a little bit, when he feels he's getting fouled, he's getting fouled, he's getting fouled, and he's not getting calls. So that's the other side to that coin where it's like, yeah, you are going to be able to play a little bit more free yourself. But keep in mind, too, that some things that you might have gotten a whistle for before, it's just not going to go. So you have to play through that frustration and learn how to adjust to that as well. Frank, he was chasing down Dwight on one of those plays, Mike Dunleavy style in the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, he, he he wanted the foul call on Dwight and then coming back the other way, uh, I think he technically blocked the shot, but he got a whole lot of Dwight Howard and hacked him and sent him to the line. Um, I, I think net net. I mean, you look at the numbers right now. I mean, his his free throw attempts per game. He's basically playing the same number of minutes, thirty three minutes. He's averaging nine point four free throw attempts per game versus nine point five last year. So his his attempts are are pretty much flat. Now he has he is taking a little bit more shots this year. He's taking nineteen point six versus eighteen. So his free throw rate, right, like the number of free throw attempts per shot is down a little bit. But overall, you know, I think a lot of people have probably seen some of the the numbers and the charts and graphs of, you, you know, the, the decline in free throw attempts from some of the star players. You know, think of James Harden as sort of the, the obviously the one that, that most people think about. Um, he has certainly avoided, you know, any type of dramatic decrease in, in free throw rate. And I think largely because, you know, the the new rules are targeting the sort of sort of con artist perimeter type, you know, driving, hooking uh, chicanery type stuff that, that obviously Giannis never really trafficked in the first place. So, um, so I don't think it affects him as much offensively as, you know, pretty much any other superstar player. Um, and then on the flip side though, you know, you look at his foul numbers, he's averaging just three fouls a game, uh, 3.0 fouls per game. I think he had just one tonight and, uh, he's normally, been, I think that's the lowest number he's had in about five years. So his fouls are, are definitely down. And when you think about the Bucks depth right now, <laughs> <laughs> um, it has never been more important for Giannis to avoid foul trouble. So I think if you think about, even if you thought, you know, Hey, maybe he's going to the free throw line, you know, I don't know, once, once less per game or something, is he losing a couple free throws per game? Because maybe teams or refs are just letting everybody go a little bit more crazy, which I, I think they are. I mean, I think people would generally agree, like more is being let go teams, teams get guys are getting away with more handsy play, even if that's not really what the rule changes were intended to, to emphasize. 
Uh, I think net net, you know, uh, Hey, he's still getting the line a ton. Um, I think again, his field goal percentage, his field goal percentage jumped from 49% to 51 and percent tonight. So good to see that headed in the right direction, still well below where we've used to seeing him the last few years. But, um, but I think probably, you know, over, overall, just given how important he is to just being able to be on the floor, I think, you know, even if there is a little bit of trade-off, I think you'll, you'll take it. And obviously, um, hopefully that follow rate remains low because, you know, Hopefully his, his presence will become a little less important. You can get Brooke Lopez back, but especially when Brooke is out, I mean, if Giannis is in foul trouble, that's you're just climbing a mountain. With Chris tonight, as we sort of move on to him, and, and again, I, I think you've, you, you sort of already hinted to it, Frank, but if you're looking at Drew Holiday, he's been back now for a few games, and then Chris Milton first game back. It made sense that there was a little bit of rust there, but it did feel like we were back in the postseason a little bit when he hit those back-to-back threes in the fourth quarter because at that point, it was uh, basically the lead was changing. Or, or, you know, every few possessions was a one-point game. Giannis was off the floor as well. And then all of a sudden, he hits those two threes. They're up by five. And they never really looked back after that point. They were pretty comfortable. And it was just huge that he was able to hit those two. But I, I think the passing was the thing that, that stood out for me. Uh, there was three passes in particular. Uh, the first one was at the start of the third quarter. It was a, a Drew Holiday actually missed a, an easy layup to start the half. It just rolled off the rim. And then the next play down, Chris just got in a pick and roll with Giannis, found him with that little bounce pass, easy bucket. You're like, okay, Chris and Giannis are back there. He had a look away to Drew under the basket. And then uh, the one, the, the play that ended in the Giannis three, the catch and shoot ball swing, was actually a nice dribble penetration. Looked like he was going to the corner, faked out the guys, went to the wing, a couple passes, and it was a three. And Giannis, after the game in his post-game interview, said that it, he just draws attention. And I think that they've lacked that. They've lacked having Grayson and and obviously Pat and these guys that have been hitting these big shots. But I, I think that's right. They they even though even though he wasn't hitting shots, it just felt like the offense was more potent with Chris on the floor. Yeah, I, yeah, I just I, think again. Yeah, I would the, agree. The, uh, come on, guys. I, I should have yeah, come on out. You guys are both I, just I, staring, I know, staring at each other here. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I'm and flapping all here um yeah it's just a single turn for chris tonight and he starts the game with five and it's like some, some i don't know but i mean it's like a couple points and it's like i mean he's getting back he's up at the injury down at the corner there and then and hit four seven so six points up got to the free throw line Bucks out in front, and really, I, I don't think they. Uh, it never was like I don't. I think it, was, it probably got down to a one possession game at some point, but um, but that really was ultimately kind of the cushion they needed. So yeah, man, having him out there and just being that that fulcrum of the offense, especially when Giannis and Drew are, aren't out there, is just just so important. And you know, interesting. I mean, Grayson Allen, the, the quietest game we've seen from him in quite a while. Only I think six shots, and his his streak of hitting multiple threes uh, comes to an end, but. Um, but that's, I think that's just one of those interesting dynamics to watch. You know, you just don't need Grace and Allen to be quite as involved offensively when Chris is out there. And so, um, but you know, overall though, I mean, I just, I just go back to Giannis. I mean, Giannis just had so many more assisted baskets than we were used to him seeing. And it just felt like Giannis was not having to get the ball in the post and face up like late in the clock and just create stuff out of nothing. And a lot of that is just because Chris can do that. And, you know, the pick and roll stuff, him, Andrew, they were, they were getting him a lot of easy buckets tonight. So Yeah. Welcome back, Chris Middleton. I was, I, you know, 16 points, 12 shots, six assists, I, plus 13. That was definitely way more than I expected. Certainly more after that than I expected, you know, after the first half, which was pretty rough. Yeah, Camille, I got, I got a tweet during this game uh, just to follow up on Frank's point. And we've discussed that. It's going to change for Grayson Allen. He'll still get these open threes, but just the volume. I don't think he's going to continue to get up nine to 10 threes a game. Yeah, I got a tweet during the game from a, from a Bucks fan that said, man, sometimes it just feels like Grayson Allen is doing nothing out there. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, have you been watching basketball this season? Come on. Come on. Let's not turn on Grayson Allen for after one game, Camille. He has one game, one game where he makes one three, has five points, <laughs> and, and the floodgates come out for, for Grayson. But, no, I mean, to your point, um, it wasn't a great Grayson game. Honestly, outside of Giannis, Bobby, 
Pat and then Chris had his 16. Like the other like points were very hard to come by on this Bucks team tonight. And the four buckets that Chris made were all very timely. The two mid rangers, as Frank mentioned, in the third quarter when the lead was slipping, that zone was putting the Bucks in so much trouble in the third. I think Russ had like seven assists in the third. Like it was just like a, a weird quarter of everything going the Lakers' way. And Chris helped steady the ship going into the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter hits, boom, two threes. Now we're tied with Ray Allen for for the all time, you know, three point record in Bucks history. And I have to admit, when I saw he tied the record, the first thing I did was to see how many minutes he had. I was like, oh, he's at he's up to twenty four. I was like, ah, he might not get back in the game after this one. Like, I think probably about twenty five minutes. But when I saw him back, I was like, please break the record. It did not happen tonight, but Chris still made his impact felt all throughout that game. And even just the attention that Chris draws, because you have to respect the shot. It does not take too much for Chris to get hot after he's been slumping. It can come on just like that. And I think other teams respect that as well. So it was really good to see him out there. And as you mentioned, his playmaking ability. Um, there are some who I've seen on Twitter and whatnot say that Chris doesn't need to dribble that much or he should have the ball as often in his hands. But he, he is trusted on this team, and the chemistry that he has with Giannis, as you mentioned, he can find Giannis <laughs> easily. Like they just played together for so long at this point that they just work well together, and it was really good to see Chris back out there. I didn't expect a huge Chris Middleton game, given the fact that he just had COVID. He hasn't played in two weeks or so. So what we got from Chris tonight, everything we got was was necessary, and it was good to see him back out there on that court. In 30 minutes, I didn't realize he played 30 minutes until I was just checking the box score. Like it didn't, it didn't feel like they were having to really, you know, hold him back a lot in the first half, maybe a little bit, but obviously they needed him down the stretch, which again, mm -hmm. eh, not, you know, the Bucks are still working some things out, but um, 30 minutes from him was big. And by the way, I, I, the best compliment we can pay Pat Connaughton is he scores 16 points on 10 shots. And we're just like, yeah, another good game from Pat. You know, I mean, yeah, that's just, so big especially with drew man just drew's offense just not being where it needs to be you know we've used to seeing grace and Ann pat night to night shoulder probably way more than they need a shoulder in terms of the offensive burden tonight again you needed all those threes from pat including some not not too easy ones i mean you know, most pretty much all above the break yeah that one like dribble back three in the thing in the second half when the bucks were kind of creaking along offensively so um and other than him semi usually 0 for 9 or over 7 and Ooh. George Hill and Jordan War were both 0 for, 0 for 1 in uh, in off the bench. So one guy made a shot off the bench. It was Pat Connaughton. And I think that's probably the other interesting thing about seeing this version of the team is you look at the rotation and it's nine guys. Jordan War barely played. He had maybe some a misadventurous pass that I don't know if he got pulled right after that. But um, but uh, it felt more like a typical Bucks rotation, right? There weren't guys playing, you know, we didn't see two way dudes um, playing 15 minutes or something like that. This felt more like, okay, the, the, you know, these are rotations that even if it's not the full strength version of the team, you don't have Brooke, it creates a very different look for the team. Um, at least you're getting reps with a group of guys that are going to need to get reps together and are going to need to play together. And hopefully everybody's going to, you know, all these guys are going to be available and playing at a high level come playoffs. So I thought that's, you know, probably the, mo the, the one thing I'm really looking forward to knock on wood, these guys can stay healthy is, you know, again, we don't know when Brooke is coming back, but at a minimum, you're playing all guys that you expect will have a role on this team. And so maybe you stretch some of those guys a little more than you want to, but at a minimum, you know, you, I think you can start to build some reps and some rapport playing the group of guys that that you're going to want to play. Yeah, nine guys, as you sort of mentioned too. Uh, is that Jordan Moore past the bounce pass in transition? He tried. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah that like, was the one that it was like, but it's not going to like that one. It's like sometimes you can just score, man. And I tell you what, by the way, <laughs> By the way, the Jordan Moore at the end of the first quarter with one second left, and he just oh. goes, nah, nah, come on, Got to protect that three-point field goal percentage. It's bad enough, man. He can't he can't be dragging that that field goal percentage further down by taking you know three-quarter court shots. But yeah, good good call. That's your your second year, man. You gotta you gotta just heave it, man. Coaches coaches should be watching that. I was actually at a game. Uh, because the, I've mentioned this, but the Australian basketball season's getting going here. And uh, our old friend Xavier Munford hit one of those the other night just before half time, under a second left, full court, nothing but net. Jordan, he could have been a hero. Could have been a hero tonight, but he decided not to. But actually stared at him for about a second after that and then stormed <laughs> off, stormed off, grabbed his clipboard, typical Bud uh, fashion. Uh, one last point we've got uh, from tonight before we wrap up this show is 
everyone watching on YouTube can see, Camille has this uh, lovely uh, Bucks. Uh, it's kind of like the hockey sweater they had. They were selling a while back. I don't know if they still sell those. But anyway, it's the purple and green stuff. So the jerseys tonight, Frank, I'll, I'll let you go first. Me and Camille already did discuss this before we started recording. But any any hot takes from the jerseys? Honestly, I thought on TV, it's kind of not really even noticeable. Yeah, and by the way, can you tell? I'm actually wearing a weird like purple plaid shirt, which I wasn't really... It's not not because they're wearing the jerseys tonight. It just so happened to work out that way. Um I, I, I thought they looked good. I, I mean, I, I I figured they would look pretty good. I think the, the important thing when you see the jerseys just like untucked, like laying on a table, the purple strut, you know, the purple mm. piping is, is more obvious because it goes all the way down. But when they're tucked in, it looks more just like a pure kind of Irish rainbow with purple, which I think looks better. Um, so I, I thought they looked good. You know, I thought they looked sharp. Um, I, usually I'm, I don't know, Kane, I mean, you know me, like I, I'm, I'm a little more critical of jerseys than you are, but I'm also, you know, not like you know our friend David Dunn slash Elijah Price level um, of of overanalyzing jerseys and and tearing my hair out over it. So I usually once I see Giannis you know dunking and looking cool in jerseys, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm still this looks pretty good. And you know I'm too old to 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 buy a jersey at this point. So um, but I, I thought they looked they looked nice. I you know I don't love the like um, you know and and Camille. I mean I'm a child of the '90s. You know I grew up '92 is when I first started watching the team. I'm the type of person who has like a negative view of the purple in part because I don't have fond views of the nineties bucks. And I realize eventually they got, you know, had that nice yeah. run. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you're a bit younger than I am. So um, maybe that's why you have, you have a more kind of positive view of the purple than I do. But um, I thought, I thought this was a tasteful, I think it's a really tasteful usage of the purple in the, in the current Jersey. So people like me who, you know, don't love purple um, and don't want the old purple jerseys brought back. Um, I think it works, um, but it's still so, kind of something that people who do like purple can feel like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring back purple. And there's a lot of gear that certainly has a lot more purple, which I will not be buying. But um, Camille, I don't know, maybe 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 that stuff is for you and not me. I will absolutely. I saw the I think Bobby had on like the purple, all purple hoodie. I said, I'm absolutely buying that hoodie as soon <laughs> as I can find the link. But yeah, I when I think of the purple and green bucks, my first thoughts go to Big Dog, Ray Allen and Sam Cassell. Like that was that team was the one that blew the doors open for the bucks for me, um, like to the point where we were at a middle school dance and it was the. Uh, Eastern Conference Finals, and we were around the TV that the DJ had behind his booth watching the Bucks game rather than, you know, being teenagers and dancing. So uh, fond memories of the green and the purple. And I think that the city jerseys look better on court than I thought they did when I just saw the individual pictures. I think the full uniform itself with the way that the rainbow goes down the side and the shorts have like just that vibrant purple going down. And I think that really pops. And overall, the jerseys are just really clean to me. Um, I went to Marquette, Bucks fan, so I'm a big fan of all of the rainbow, <laughs> the Irish rainbows on the side of the jersey. So this is a win, a win for me on this one. The only thing about this jersey that's kind of off to me is the Bucks lettering, the the current Bucks lettering on it. Something about that feels off in the overall scheme of the jersey. I don't know if it needs to be outlined in different color or whatever it needed to be, but something about that part of the jersey is the weakest part to me. But overall, I think it's a really clean, a clean look. I, th I thought you were going to say the collar. I, I think the, the collar, collar too. the collar looks a little, I, I don't really notice it when the players are running around wearing it. But like when I look at the, you know, like the mannequin wearing the collar, the collar looks like that horseshoe thing or wishbone thing looks a little bit thick to me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I actually like the word mark. But whatever. We're fans of the jerseys, Kane. You tried to drive us apart. It's the first time Camille and I have been on a podcast together. You tried to drive a wedge, turn this mm -hmm. into, you know, like a talking head. You know, I don't know. One of us is going to be Stephen A. Smith and the other is going to be whoever Stephen A. Smith talks to these days. I don't even know who's on the show anymore with Stephen A. Smith. But but no, look, we, we agreed. Camille, Camille's smart. Look, you, you, can't, you can't. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. Thumbs up Dustin, to the New Jerseys. Dustin Gotzi likes you both. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's all we need to worry about. We'll get Dustin back on the pod at some point. Uh, and undefeated, I guess that's the main point. They're undefeated in the New Jersey's one and oh, so that's all you that, that that's all that's all that really matters. Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, as we wrap it up, remind you about the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. So you can check that out, uh, if that's your type of thing. 
Uh, guys, a, a little three-way post-game podcast. It's not something we're used to. I think we we had some sketchy moments with the internet there, but I think for the most part, um, this this will be listenable. And uh, this is, uh, Frank, thanks for joining us. We're at thirty-four and a half minutes. I don't know what happened to the twenty minutes there. I can I can hear my my wife, who is a Rockets fan, is uh, is keeping my daughter occupied here. Um, so I I know my daughter is ready to go upstairs and get a story uh, read to her. So that's my job. So I need to go take care of uh my business now but uh but yeah shout out to my wife the rockets fan for uh for letting us finish this podcast and not not making me have to you know pull pull the hook early we knew you weren't going no matter what happened frank big night for Giannis. you were always going to be here glad we could do it someone uh, someone had to get some pat Connaughton love into this podcast i mean we we short tripped at him again but you know shout out to pat no no it's true and camille always good to catch up with you make sure you check out the technical foul podcast uh camille's uh one every wednesday camille uh yeah new episodes every wednesday we record live on tuesday so if you check out our youtube page you can catch us live as we record well 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 we have another guest to the show and it's not <laughs> Dud- and it's not dudley the dog tell you who, who's your favorite basketball player Giannis. there you love go. that there you go she knows what's what what a perfect way good to taste it's the cutest possible way we could finish this show. So let's wrap it up there for uh, myself, for Frank, for Tilly, for Camille. We'll catch all you guys tomorrow.